Lecture 1.2, Coordinate Systems on the Sphere. In the last lecture, we discussed how, because the Earth spins on its axis, the stars and constellations appear to move across the night sky as if they were attached to an imaginary celestial sphere. In this lecture, we will look at coordinate systems on the sphere um, to describe the positions of the stars uh, and planets in the sky. The first coordinate system we'll discuss is the altitude azimuth system. So imagine that you are here standing uh, outside. The cardinal directions are on the are on the diagram. So north is that way, south, uh, west, and east. The altitude azimuth system uh, is tied to your local position on the Earth. So it depends on your local perspective from the Earth. Altitude is, a, is the angle that a star is above the horizon. Zero degrees altitude would be on the horizon. 90 would be at the zenith, which is the point straight above your head. Negative altitudes would be below the horizon. Azimuth is the angle measured from due north in an eastward direction. So zero degrees azimuth would be something pointing um, in the, towards the north, and as you increase the azimuth, you would go east would be 90 degrees, south is 180, and west is 270. Um, again, the zenith uh, is the point directly above your head, and it has an altitude of 90. It doesn't matter what the azimuth is. Um, it all maps to the same point. The nadir is the point directly below your feet. So it has an altitude of negative 90 degrees. And the meridian is a great circle that goes um, uh, from due north to the point straight over your head to due south. The meridian is uh, very useful in astronomy because um, usually get the clearest view of stars and planets and galaxies when the um, object is uh, is near the meridian. That's uh, usually the best view because it's the highest altitude. Okay, the second coordinate system is called equatorial coordinates, and this system is um, mapped to the celestial sphere. So this one is relative to the stars themselves, not to your local position on the Earth. Equatorial coordinates are like latitude and longitude, but on the celestial sphere instead of on the Earth. So declination is the equivalent of latitude. So uh, it's usually given by just DEC or the Greek letter delta. And it's measured from the celestial equator. So remember the celestial equator is the great circle on the celestial sphere that's directly above the Earth's equator. And so you just measure um, the angle either north or south from the celestial equator, and that's the declination. So stars with positive declination are um, kind of above the Earth's northern hemisphere. Stars with negative declination are above the Earth's southern hemisphere. Right ascension is equivalent to longitude. So um, we'll discuss exactly where the, the zero is or the origin is for right ascension a little bit later. But uh, there is a point on the celestial sphere where it's a zero, uh, zero right ascension. And uh, they're measured in, in hours. So from zero to 24 hours uh, instead of degrees, usually. Uh, we'll explain why that is um, here in just a minute. Um, the North Celestial Pole, remember that's the point directly above the Earth's North Pole, has a declination of plus 90, South Celestial Pole negative 90, and the Celestial Equator would have a declination of zero, zero degrees. Okay, so uh, like I said, right ascension is usually written in terms of hours and minutes of arc instead of degrees. So the Earth spins around on its axis once every 24 hours. 
instead of measuring right ascension in terms of degrees from 0 to 360 degrees, astronomers choose to measure it from 0 to 24 hours. If you were to go outside, look up at the night sky, uh, and, and look at um, the stars that are, say, on the meridian, if you wait an hour, those stars will appear to rotate through the sky by 15 degrees. So that's because 360 degrees divided by 24 hours is, gives you a rate of 15 degrees per hour. So each hour of right ascension is further subdivided into 60 minutes, and each minute is divided into 60 seconds. So here's an example. The star Cirrus has a right ascension of 6 hours 45 minutes. So let's convert that to degrees. So uh, first you, uh, we can just convert the 45 minutes into hours, to decimal hours. So 45 minutes, there's one hour is the same as 60 minutes. The, the minutes cancel. So we're left over with a number in hours. So 45 divided by 60 is, seven, is 0.75 hours. Uh, and then we can just add that onto the six hours that we had originally. So six hours, 45 minutes is the same as 6.75 hours. And now we can convert that to degrees using the conversion factor that one hour of right ascension is the same as 15 degrees. So 6.75. 75 times 15 is 101.25, which should make sense. So 101 is a little bit over 90 degrees, and we know that um, if you rotate the celestial sphere through six hours, that's one quarter of a complete revolution. So again, a little over 90, 90 degrees, so that should make sense. All right, so here's a uh, homework problem for you to think about. Um, circumpolar stars are stars that never uh, set below the horizon. Um, and so this question is about finding that uh, minimum declination uh, where the stars just barely kind of skim the horizon as they circle around the North Celestial Pole. And the question is, um, how is that um, smallest declination related to your local latitude. So here's a, uh, a table of the seven stars that are part of the Big Dipper. Their declinations are here. And so based on these declinations, uh, which one of these stars in the Big Dipper will, will never set? It'll, they'll always just circle around uh, the North Celestial Pole as seen from Laverne. So you'll need to know what the local latitude is of, of Laverne to answer this problem. So here you want to draw a little diagram, just use geometry, and find the relationship between your latitude and um, that minimum circumpolar limit, and then use that to then uh, figure out which stars are actually circumpolar. So here's an example of a star chart. We looked at one of these earlier. This is Orion, so again, there's Orion's belt, Betelgeuse, Rigel. So you can see that um, on the vertical axis, uh, declination is plotted. So zero degrees declination, remember, is the celestial equator. And you can see that that runs pretty close to right through Orion's belt. So these stars up here, the, the top of Orion is in the uh, has a positive declination. The negative the stars below Orion's belt are have negative have negative declination. In the horizontal axis, we see that hours of right ascension are plotted. So here's four hours, five, six, seven. If you go out at night, um, these stars right here. If you kind of watch these stars right here, they will. Uh, move uh, to the west and an hour later these stars here will now be where they were. So that's why astronomers use hours to label uh, right ascension instead of degrees. Okay, uh, one final topic 
uh, and that is how do you measure the angle between two stars if they have their if you have your, their coordinates and so this is a problem in spherical trigonometry so here's a uh, a little triangle that's been uh, drawn on the surface of a sphere the capital letters a b and c are the the angles on the in the vertices of the triangle in degrees and then the lowercase a b and c are the lengths of the sides of the triangle but again we're in we're on the surface of a sphere so that's also measured in degrees we won't go into spherical trigonometry in much detail uh, one of the most useful identities uh, for spherical trig is the cosine rule so this says that the cosine of the length of this side of the triangle uh, lowercase a is related to the lengths of the other sides of the triangles uh, cosine b cosine c and then also the cosine of that of that kind of that opposite side of the triangle the cosine of the the angle of the vertex on the, on the opposite side of the triangle right there so cosine capital a so let's use the cosine rule uh, to figure out the angle between two stars so we're going to draw a triangle one side one vertex of the triangle is going to be at the north celestial pole and then the other two vertices are going to be at the positions of two stars that we want to measure so the idea is that this side of the triangle which is labeled delta theta that's the that's what we want to try to solve for what is the angle between star a and star b okay so here we go that's the north celestial pole star a star b this side of the triangle let's label that as a and again that's going to equal our delta theta that we're trying to solve for the angle here between these two sides of the triangle that's just the difference in right ascension of the coordinates between these two stars so that's just alpha 2 is the right ascension of uh, star b alpha 1 is the right ascension of star a and then the other two lengths of the sides of the triangle are just uh, 90 degrees minus the declination of each star so b is going to be 90 minus the declination of star b and then uh, c is going to be 90 minus the declination of star a so we now have a triangle law of cosines we're just going to plug everything in so a turns into cosine theta b turns into 90 minus delta 2 c 90 minus delta 1 and a is the uh, difference in the in the angles uh, after a little uh, trig identity substitution so remember cosine of 90 minus delta 2 is the same as sine of delta 2 um, and sine of 90 minus delta 2 is the same as cosine delta 2 so we made those substitutions and here's here's the result so if you have the if you have the coordinates alpha 1 and delta 1 that's the right ascension and declination of star a and alpha 2 and delta 2 that's the right ascension and declination of star b then you can use this formula to figure out there the angle between them here's an example let's find the angle between betelgeuse and rigel so opposite corners of the constellation orion so here is the coordinates of betelgeuse and here's the coordinates of rigel and we're trying to find that delta theta between them so the first thing you want to do is convert everything to degrees um, like we did in the previous example so we want to convert the right ascension of betelgeuse and rigel from hours and minutes into degrees and we showed how to do that in the previous example and then just use the um the law of cosines for spherical trig plug in our values and uh and then solve for what delta theta is so when you calculate this thing and then take the inverse cosine you find that delta theta is 18.62 degrees so you have a homework problem and that is to find 
the angular distance between the end of the tail of the Big Dipper, so there's the handle of the Big Dipper, there's the bowl of the Big Dipper. The end star in the handle is called Alcade. Uh, the one uh, at the at the other end of the bowl uh, is uh, Dub or Dubi. Um, and so you want to find the angle between those two. And so you've got the right ascension and declination of all the stars in the Big Dipper, so you can use this table uh, to uh, calculate the delta theta. Okay, so that's it. In the next lecture, we will talk about the motion of the sun.